All right, welcome back. This is uh, lesson five of our database tutorial series. So far, we've created a database and added a table um, and added a couple of records into that table. If you're just viewing at this point uh, and you're, you're new to databases, I would definitely recommend going back and starting from the first uh, video. And as I promised at the uh, end of the last lesson, what we're going to talk about now is uh, the concept of relational databases and this is where databases uh, one get more exciting and more uh, useful and effective um, but at the same time get uh, a little more difficult and, and a little more intense and uh, when you're building relational databases it's almost vital that you come up with a, a sketch of the database before you start otherwise you could get yourself into a situation where you've got to backtrack and start over and with these databases especially if you're entering in data uh, that could be a massive headache and, and a loss of money and time um, one way to sketch out databases would be how we did it here in Excel uh, this is not my preferred way uh, I only did this because I wanted you to see the visual representation of a table itself. Um, however, I've gotten by with uh, using marker boards or paper and pen. Um, uh, those of you who know me and know my obsession with marker boards, uh, that's probably not surprising. But uh, uh, I do, I, I keep several marker boards handy so that I can sketch out databases and, and other other items. Uh, you know on a whim um, we're not going to use the marker board in this lesson because I don't feel like hooking up a camera um, so what we'll do is we're going to use um, Adobe Illustrator to give you a similar representation of how I build these these sketches but um, if you don't have Illustrator or whatever you know just follow along with a piece of paper and pen or marker board um, because it's all going to be the same. All right, now we've got Illustrator open, and what I've done uh, is, as beforehand, I created an example um, with kind of a key uh, to how how I do this. And this isn't necessarily how you guys have to do your sketches, and you don't have to do a sketch at all. Um, however, the way I do it works, and if you like it, go for it. So I'm going to include this PDF um, with the video files on the website so you can use it as a reference um, and this will make sense as we start doing the sketch. But basically we put the table name down, you know, drop a underline there and we have two columns. And I do this because once you get into a relation data, relational database uh, you'll start having indexes um, uh, multiple indexes and and a bunch of field names what uh, I just find this helpful to have them separated plus if you need to add a key as you're brainstorming you can do it here and they're still separated rather than adding them to the list and having it you know kinda messy mixed with the uh, fields and keys and down here that is we're just uh, breaking that down for you in case you forget what I just said um, so let's go back to Illustrator our sketch won't be as fancy as my example um, and like I've mentioned, I, I generally do this on a marker board or on a piece of paper. But uh, for this example, we're going to use Illustrator. Uh, we're going to assume that we haven't already started this database. So we're going to start out with our contacts table. So we have our table name. And I'm just going to toss a line down here. And we're going to come up with our fields here. So our index is going to be ID. And I'm going to get into something now that's going to, we're going to end up having to change the the uh, table a little bit. Um, the way I named our field names was a little different than how I would normally do it, uh, just to not confuse you. Um, but when you're doing databases, especially ones that will get pretty in-depth, where you have multiple tables and multiple relations to the tables, it's, all, it's, it's almost a good idea to be a little more creative and descriptive with your uh, field names and you'll see why as we start making relations and uh, other tables but for now um, instead of just calling this field ID we're gonna call it contact underscore ID 
and then our next field we'll just say contact first for first name and then contact last um, and I'm gonna make these a little smaller so uh, now you can get a better idea of what I mean um, without all the glitz and glamour over here um, so I normally wouldn't make the sketch this huge that way we can make multiple tables here on this page um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a relation um, and this is where multiple indexes come into play and what we're going to do is we're gonna create a new table and to speed things up I'm just gonna make a copy of this here and we're gonna call this table contact types What we're going to do is we're going to create a primary key for this table and we'll call it type ID. And then here for the kind of standard fields, we'll have a type name and uh, we can keep it simple like that for now. And what these contact types are going to represent. Um, uh, to use maybe Microsoft Outlook for an example when you save your contacts in there you can add categories um, or types to the, the contact uh, so you might have a group of contacts called clients and then you might have a group of contacts simply called friends or family or what have you and that's what we're going to store in this table is the different types of contacts we can have and so there'll be a type name for say friends and then another record for um, clients now here is where the relationship comes into play and the multiple uh, indexes in a table we could create these two tables but there's no association between the two um, how do we um, tell a contact um, that it's uh, a certain type so what we come in here and do is we're going to add another index and we're going to add type ID and what this is going to allow us to do is we're going to be able to insert the ID of the type now you might be thinking well why don't we instead just come over here into our standard fields and put in contact type and we just type out friend uh, you could but that's not a very effective way to do it um, using the ID numbers is way easier and it's way better for searching with uh, queries and such so for now I'll take my word for it and so we're gonna put in a type ID and the and one more thing I'm going to introduce, we're going to put another field in here under the contacts and it's going to be called status. This could be named several different things, I prefer the term status, um, but essentially the, the result is going to be the same. What this is going to be is it's going to tell um, the database that either whether the contact is active or inactive. So say we were displaying this list of contacts on a website we could choose by by using this uh, field here whether a contact should be displayed to the general public or not um, and the way we would do that is simply um, we could put in um, a value yes or no um, or true or false um, I prefer one or zero yes or no zero being no one being yes or zero being inactive or one being active what that type of value is is called is a boolean um, and there's actually a data type for boolean in the in the uh, table options um, however in this case since it's just going to be a one or zero we're going to just make it an integer and before we hop back into phpMyAdmin um, when you're first starting out 
doing these, you might actually um, leave yourself some room to put in some of the parameters. Um, so what you could do, uh, and this, like I said, this could be handy if you're you're still new to these, uh, to building databases, um, to keep give yourself a reference when you're going to create these tables, um, or even if uh, you know some people have a job of just coming up with the uh, database so you might need to hand this off to a team member who's going to actually build the database so you could come in here and maybe put in your parameters that are essential so that the person or yourself who's going to go and, and enter this into the uh, database will know that you are, are, are wanting this to be a var car with 200 characters um, and likewise something like that um, now I've, I've been doing this long enough um, and especially when I do this on my own I don't need to necessarily go through all that because I, I, I already have that in my head um, a lot of times when you're building these databases they're gonna end up starting to be very similar so I'm gonna save this and we'll include it in the uh, video documents on the website all right and now really quick before we end this lesson um, we're going to go ahead and apply that we're going what we just did uh, so we're going to click on our contacts table we're going to go to the structure and we're going to add those uh, two columns to the uh, the table that we just created um, now the standard way to do indexes is to keep them at the top it's not necessary but it's it's way easier to read so we're going to end up uh, doing these one at a time because of that so we're going to add one field and this time choose after ID and say go we're gonna call this type ID and it's gonna be an integer and we'll just go ahead and make this one three as well and for the index we're gonna call it just an index it's not gonna be the primary and it's not gonna be unique because several uh, contacts could have the same value um, or the same type. So say index. We don't need auto increment. Um, and we'll go ahead and say save. And we're going to add one more field, which is the status after email. And like I mentioned, there is a data type called Boolean. Um, but uh, just keep things simple we're gonna make it an integer with one um, character value and this time we're gonna utilize the default option or attribute where we say default is as defined one so anytime we create a new record um, if we don't define whether it's active or inactive when we insert the record it will automatically make it active um, so if we wanted uh, uh, records to automatically be inactive then we could put it in as a zero uh, so we're gonna do one for now and go ahead and say save and really quick as I mentioned um, about naming I want to come in here and, and and fix the naming here so it's so we're gonna change ID And we'll say save and we're good to go uh, now what we're gonna do really quick is we're gonna create the other table just a quick recap it's our types table we have two fields or columns so contact types two fields field name for the, for the uh, primary key is going to be type ID and it's gonna be an integer and it's gonna be three uh, we want to definitely make sure that we make this the same type ID and context table unlike the type ID in the context table this is going to be the primary key so we're gonna choose primary and we're gonna choose auto increment and for the second field type name var car and we'll just say 200 and we can leave the less the, the rest of it blank say save there you go now we have our two tables and there is now a relation 
to each other via the uh, type ID.